Hey guys, Joanna coming in. Actually, welcome back to the Land of Sieges, kind of. Um, actually doing a interview here with Genesis, the creator of this fantastic world, new world mod. Um, he's going to be kind of letting us know a little bit of a couple of things that are going to be coming out in patch number six. So guys, hold on and we will be right there with you. All right, guys. So here we are coming in with Genesis, the creator of the new world mod. Genesis, hello. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you for this opportunity to showcase patch six, also known as Anatolian Kingdoms for the new world mod. Do you have any questions, Joe, before we go? I, I am actually, I'm really enjoying the campaign that I'm playing. Um, and I, I'm actually looking forward to not so much wrapping this campaign up, even though finally the Nervii are dead. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'm actually kind of looking forward to being able to have the opportunity to start another campaign with one of the newer factions that you've made. And... Uh, Actually, right right off the bat here, I'm seeing this faction called Lydia. Yes, okay, so uh, the region of Anatolia, which is modern-day Turkey, it was very bare-bones in the default game. It was either, it was split between Greeks or Eastern people, and it didn't really make much sense. There, there, there was nothing really going on there. I mean, yeah, there's the game going on there, <laughs> obviously, but I decided to take it a step further and add it another like completely unique culture and the culture that was dominant in that region and you'll see where this comes from uh we're, we're descendant from the hittite empire which mm -hmm. fell a long long time ago before the events of the game but lydia and the other faction that will be revealed in a few minutes uh are known to be descendants of the hittites and that's a different or new culture that blends Eastern, Greek, and one completely new culture, all in one. So, mm -hmm. Lydia, um, its roster is a little is a little different than what you're used to. They're they've got a lot of heavy cavalry, they've got mm -hmm. a lot of heavy infant like heavy spear infantry. Not a lot of them, but they got some very heavy spear infantry and one very interesting unit that I am experimenting with for the first time, and that is spear units without shields. Now you're probably thinking, hey, would that get them killed really quickly? Well, they're very well armored, and they got a lot of skill. Um, now, they definitely still need some balancing, which is why I have a beta build in Joe's hands right now, so he can test it out and see what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. um, but... This will this unit will add a new dynamic in the way the game is kind of played. So you get these spear units; they they form up walls with their shields. Awesome. Well, this unit now it has they're called sergeants or spear sergeants. Mm -hmm. They got chain mail, all right. And then their formation; they're the only units in the game that have formation attack added back. And the reason for this is so that they can hold a choke point or so, or, or sorts in a pseudo pike wall looking formation and they're actually very effective against other spears and because of their increased skill with the spear and not having to be held down by holding a shield in the other hand it actually makes it really effective at blocking a charge charge coming in you just slam the spear forward mm -hmm. and that gives them expert charge defense now i think that unit alongside some of the other new stuff will be actually quite interesting to try out in battles and in the campaign i think it will give you a new way to play the game that's not even touching a lot of the other new stuff or a lot of the other new units that are being added in across all factions i'll get to that in a bit uh the buildings for lydia they're a mix of eastern barbarian greek you'll you'll, you'll get a look at them in the campaign i think it will be interesting uh they got their own faction group obviously hmm. and next from the main faction that's being at the main factions that are being added in we have troy now you're probably wondering troy what are they doing here didn't they die off like what five six seven hundred years before the events of the game well alternate history such as new world is based on uh and what if troy the city was rebuilt or relocated in a place very close to its original original 
location. site. Really. Mm. Yeah, location. And so they're, they're obviously more modern in terms of what they'll be wearing, what they'll be using, and their unit composition. They're mm. not going to be like uh, in uh, Total War Saga Troy, where they're very Bronze Age based. But they will have a bronze aesthetic and their own uh, look to the, and style to the units. Now, they're not going to be Greek, contrary to popular belief. They're not going to be Greek. They're going to play out differently. Their units are going to be different, look different. Hmm. So don't don't be thinking that it's just a reskinned Greece. It's not. The campaign, they got their own culture, their own buildings, all that. And in the battles with their units and all and, and the way they play out, I think, like I said, it's a mix of Eastern and Greek, similar to the Seleucids, but with a little bit of more, you could say, Anatolian roots in there. Or okay. Hittite. Okay. You, you, you'll get to see as you... Get the chance when you get the chance to to play around with them. Now Troy is not done at the moment. Yeah, if I was actually Troy just was about just, to say yeah. that the uh, <laughs> the roster here looks a little thin compared to the uh, Lydia the uh, Lydia roster there. But yes. I mean, I I see that you definitely have you got a good base here to go off of. Yes, you definitely have well, a good base to go off of here. Thanks. Well, okay, so I left Troy to the last section of the update that I'm working on. That's really all that's left before the mod launches, which is to finalize Troy's roster. Uh, it is not done yet, obviously. Mm. Nowhere near, actually. Uh, and speaking of Lydia's roster, one or two more units might be added in as well. Ooh. So, yeah, you can... Yeah, I'm still the, like thinking about different balancing stuff. Okay. So, one or two more units might be added to Lydia, and you can expect the same amount of units... If not, maybe even two more uh, in Troy. Wow. Uh, like more than Lydia's roster. Yeah, since Troy is a bigger superpower than Lydia, which is, I mean, Lydia has its history, uh, its history of its own. You guys can go look it up. It's, it's actually a real place uh, or a real kingdom. Uh, but it, it's meant to be more of a major player in the region than Lydia. So obviously it's going to have a bigger roster. Mm -hmm. So... If so we were to move on, yeah. I was. Andrew, I'm, I'm looking back at the uh, the Lydia one real quick because you were talking about the spear sergeants. Um, going by some of the abilities that they have here, I see the expert charge defense, which obviously it says it right there. It's defense, so it would be something like you said about holding choke points or whatever. But I also see that they have the ability of wedge. So this yes. could also be like a bit of a flanking unit. Also, I mean they have a very very they have a pretty high melee attack for a spear infantry unit. Exactly, they're no longer being held back by having to hold a spear and a shield. They can focus all their attention on the spear, which obviously leaves them vulnerable to missiles and even other melee units. But they are very good at countering, especially, especially other spears. Mm. And they also come with the discipline trait. That's that's huge. Yeah, that's huge for 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 a flanking spear unit or non shielded f uh, spear unit. That's that's a big trait that they get. Yep, that's and you won't good. find any other unit wearing chainmail that runs as fast as they do because they're not being held by the. <laughs> held back by the shield. Yeah, they're not going to be uh, encumbered down by the extra weight of the shield. Yeah. yeah that's, there is that's... a variant. Yeah, there is a variant of them, which are the shielded sergeants, which play more like your standard elite or upper upper mid-tier, lower high-tier uh, spear unit. Mm -hmm. um, would but, you be able to give us maybe an example of what they would be close to in, in one of the other factions? Um, Thorax hoplites. Okay. Okay. Yeah, they'd be closer to the thorax oplites. Um, they might be thinking right now that there's spears and swords, nothing elite really there. Well, their shock cav and their melee cav really make up for it. They're, they're, they have shock cav with shields. I mean, you don't see that anywhere. Yeah, I'm <laughs> seeing the men at arms here. That's, yeah, uh, so... That looks terrifying. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that looks terrifying. Yeah, they're, they're very heavily armored. Uh, obviously, that comes at a cost of them being slow, mm. but they're very heavily armored. Well, let's see the... Uh... Oh, actually, yeah, there is there is a... Okay, so the Lydian Cavalry here has an 8-speed. The Men-at-Arms have a 6. So, yeah, they are yes. considerably small, considerably slower, I'll say. Um, 
But I, I imagine that, you know, sometimes the train locomotion mo- locomotive might take a couple extra seconds to get off, but once it hits, it hits. Yep. Yeah. Very, so. very cool. This is, uh, okay. I'm actually, I'm actually, uh, I heard you make mention of this faction. And can you describe what you said just before? What is this faction based off of? Like, what, okay, is, what so, is their heritage, if you will, kind of? Because you said, okay. before we started recording, you said something in there that kind of piqued my interest. It's about Lydia. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Lydia as a faction is actually a real kingdom. Now, it was absorbed by the Persian Empire, and then when Alexander conquered all that territory and Persia was defeated, that it, it just became another city in the region. It, was, it wasn't anything that special, which is why... It's actually represented in the main game as a faction called Sardis, or Sardis, which was their capital city or their capital town. Uh, but it's it's a minor faction. It's completely Greek. It's nothing really special about it. Mm. But before that, they were one of the descendants from the Hittite Empire. After it collapsed, Lydia was formed straight up after that, and it was actually the first place to invent coins in the seventh century BC. They were the first place to invent coins. Hmm. So obviously they get a little uh, commercial bonus in the campaign mm. Mm. because of that. A little, yeah. little bit of a bonus <laughs> to the trade maybe or something? Yep, trade and commerce buildings. They okay. all have a bonus from that. Okay. Uh, but did you say something, maybe I heard you wrong, but didn't you say something about a barbarian type of aspect to this faction? Or did I maybe hear you wrong? Yes. Uh, their building selections. So yeah, the way their buildings work... Uh, so, okay, so... The way most factions work in this game, so you got one military recruitment building mm. that produces everything, mm. and then you got your uh, your town centers, like all that, th- those religious places, and then all that. True. But then the barbarian factions, they kind of split off a little bit. You have the, the craftsman's house, which provides industry, but at the same time provides some military benefits. And it functions the same way here. You got industrial buildings like the craftsman's house, and the Warrior's Lodge can be built in the main, main city, which sort of act as industry and military at the same time. That's one aspect they get from the Barbarian Factions. And so, so it works out to how you have buildings that produce industry are simultaneously the buildings that produce military, but you also have a standard uh, dedicated military chain, mm. but only for melee units. When it comes to the missile units and the more guerrilla type units, those are created from the other industri- industrial buildings. Okay. So that's one aspect they get. And another aspect they get from the Eastern factions is, and I'm going to be completely honest, I don't remember if that's included in the current stable release because it's been like three months since <laughs> I launched an update. <laughs> so I don't remember what I added in afterwards and what was already in there. I actually don't remember <laughs> if this was in there, but there's a unit. Uh, called Caravan Guard that was originally in the Desert Kingdoms factions, but I ported them over to all the Eastern factions, and they can be trained and recruited at the traders' buildings that the Eastern factions have. Well, Lydia also gets those trader buildings, and they can recruit uh, Merchant Cavalry and Caravan Escort, which are two melee cavalry units unique to Lydia. So a similarity, a similarity to that would be like the the Caldones campaign that I'm doing, that one slave building that allowed me to train like mercenary Scutare and all that stuff? Yes, exactly. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a building that doesn't seem like a military building, but produces some soldiers. They, they piquing they, my interest even more on this, camp, on this <laughs> faction now. I think this might be the faction for the next campaign. I'll, I'll have to take a look and play around with it a little bit, but this might be the one. It well, may be that's, Lydia. Uh, that's good to hear. <laughs> <laughs> um, you had also said something about certain factions being involved in DLCs. Ah, uh, okay. So I got to ask, would you like me to go into that first? Or would you like me to go into each campaign split up to what I did to each campaign and look at the little things that have been added to each campaign? Uh, first? Microphone or do you is want yours. to just... Okay, so I guess I'll just cover the factions that are new, and then I'll cover in the small stuff or all the additions throughout all the campaigns. So if we're covering new factions first, then yes, you got Troy and Lydia, completely 100% unique. 
and then that's the grand campaign. And then you go into the Hannibal at the gates. Now, Hannibal at the gates have been overhauled completely. Before that, it was an alternate history type scenario with the Amazons taking Rome. I changed that. I switched that around. I reverted it back to the way it was in the Second Punic War. But all the additions to the unit rosters and all that, they carried over. Obviously, all the custom events, all that stuff carried over. That stuff hasn't been reverted back to the original, is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. And two factions that were already on the map but weren't playable before are now playable. And that oh. is, they are uh, Massilia. Everyone's familiar with Massilia. Mm -hmm. And then you got Emporion, which the word Emporion translates to trade city or trading city in either Greek or Latin, one of the two. I think it's Greek, ancient mm. Greek. Um, and the way it works and the, and the way the, uh, the scenario is playing in my head, and you'll actually see this when you go into the game, similar to Atlantis, if you guys played as Atlantis, you have a very difficult uh, political situation at the start of the game. You got different councils, each council in charge of something with some preset traits. So Atlantis used to have a council of science, which liked diplomacy and stuff like that, and then a council of uh, like maybe some extreme cult cult stuff. So they didn't like other cultures and stuff. So you had to try to appease each political group right off the bat from the start of the game. Emporion works the same. It's in a similar way where since it's a this trade hub somewhat in the center of the Mediterranean uh, you have an envoy or a council for each major culture on the map so you got one for Latin you got one for the Greeks you got one for the Iberians and you got to see which one you want to appease so if you go out there and trying to appease the uh, Iberians and the barbarian tribes the Latins the Latin ones the, the Romans are not gonna like you for it and you might lose some loyalty in that that, that would make sense yeah 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 so <laughs> instigating what is a civil war at that point because they're all part of your faction mm -hmm. uh so it it, it kind of plays as if you've got this trade uh trade center you're taking control of it in the middle of the map okay. um when it comes to the unit roster it is actually so Massilia is a mix of greek and celtic right mm -hmm. well emporion is a mix of greek and iberian so that hasn't been seen before well you mm -hmm. have it now uh <laughs> yeah that's interesting that's that's really the only thing that really sets them apart from the other factions in that campaign uh so yeah that's that's how it is right now those are the new factions that have been available in this new update now if okay. we go into each uh individual campaign mm. now first i'm gonna go over the general things that apply to every campaign or the game itself in general and then i'm going to dissect things that are added into the grand campaign in specific or handle at the gates. Okay. Um, so general stuff. So you're going to have a lot of more events and dilemmas. Now I'm actually very excited about this and I'm going to admit most of them are ported over from the rise of the Republic campaign and other campaigns in the game. They had these little events that used to pop up depending on certain uh, conditions being met. Why these events weren't ported over to the other Actions and other campaigns, I have no idea. But I, mm. no need to worry. I went ahead and did that and tailored it to work in the setting. Okay. For example, in the Rise of the Republic campaign, you would occasionally get sent envoys and and having like a, a Carthaginian politician go over to your shore and asking to for to you for you to try out their uh, their new spices or whatever or asking you to hand over a fugitive and you can get to choose what you want to do when that will impact diplomacy and have other effects mm -hmm. and it's not just one thing that's going to happen like how some of the, some events in this game you you get it, it sort of gives you the, 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 the like the um the illusion of choice but really it's always the same outcome every time depending on what you choose so you already know which one you want to choose but no this time there's a bit of a dice roll you might get something, you might get something else. So it's not always going to be positive. It's not always going to be negative. So it, you kind of have to take a gamble here. Okay. These have been ported over to both the Handball at the Gates campaign and uh, the, uh, the Grand campaign. But obviously not everybody gets it. And there are some uh, restrictions or requirements for certain stuff. So if you control a port city or a port town in the Mediterranean, you will get uh, offers from Massilia, like a trade uh, ship coming over to drop some of their new exotic wares, stuff like that. You can choose to deny it, you can choose to give it to the soldiers, you can choose to give it to your people. Um, 
that, that applies to any settlement that owns um, that owns like a port city or a town. Mm -hmm. And the and same thing happens with Carthage. Carthage will also send some random events that will happen to your faction. The only restriction here is that you can't be at war with Carthage or Massilia, or you won't get you won't get those uh, dilemmas because you're at war with them. Why would they even come to you? Okay. So, <laughs> listeners, make sure you remember that part. Don't be at war. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can get some uh, bonuses for staying on their on the, well, not being at war. They will offer you some more dilemmas. As Rome, you would get dilemmas where the plebeians or the civilians are rioting and stuff like that. That was also featured in other campaigns, but not brought over to the grand campaign in Hannibal at the Gates. Why mm -hmm. they didn't do that? I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're playing as the Barbarian Factions, you also get a lot of other events, like stumbling upon uh, a rare uh, item in the forest or something. You can choose to give it to the king or give it to the nobles, and mm -hmm. each one has some different... Yeah, it will increase the roleplay aspect of the campaign. So you're not okay. just hitting end turn and everything is just stagnant. No. Things will happen that will increase, decrease what might be going on. So if you're like on an island off of Greece, like for example, Pergamon or the Anatolian factions like Troy, like I said, islands that are off of Greece and even Atlantis, mm. so far away from the main Greenland, uh, from the main, uh, main, main land of Greece, but they're still Greek. So you will get these options that you got people that were banished from Greece, former slaves, former whatever, and you can choose to have them allow them in your city or tell them to leave and each one will have a random chance of triggering either a positive event or a negative event some of them increase your military stuff some of them you know it's like i said people that have been playing this game for a long time they probably are familiar with some of these events happening in other campaigns but the fact that they're brought into every campaign now will change how it's played oh You'll it sounds like you're definitely adding in a ton of new depth to exactly. every single campaign that this game has to offer Along exactly. with your own special little twists of factions and units and reskins and just every and building types and everything that you've been doing, working so far. Which again, um, what are we up to now, time-wise, as far as you building this mod? Uh, a little over a year. A if if we're gonna take year. over, if we're gonna look at when I started working on the mod, it's probably a year and a half. But when it was released to the public, uh, probably a year ago, and it was under a different name, and it was a legacy build. But then now, uh, I think about, it was May, I think, which mm -hmm. is when I released, and it was titled uh, Total War New World. Yes. It was I in May. That. I yeah, that. it was the end of May, I believe. That was, that was around the time that we did the first video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you guys got to, got to play it for the first time and found mm -hmm. out about the mod. <laughs> and we are very thankful for it. Uh, man, I'm thankful that the, you guys the, are covering the mod and enjoying it. <laughs> I, I I see a lot more games. I've seen a lot more replays of this of the of this mod and everything. And with the new factions and the new mod, you know, the new units, and it's I I just see this mod getting bigger and bigger and better and better. And you know, I I say it a lot, and I'm going to say it again here, actually now in front of you. Thank you very much. For putting all this hard work and effort and time into this mod and making the game different aspects of the game more enjoyable or like a like a like a breath of fresh air from an older game that hasn't really gotten a, a, a lot of uh, you know TLC, you're adding in another bit to it to make it more enjoyable again. Yes, I I mean thank you very much for everything you're saying. Like I'm not just saying that because I. I have to. No, I'm generally saying that because you have no idea how happy this makes me because <laughs> this is this is like something I'm passionate about. And some of your subscribers on your channel, when they hopped into the streams and stuff, maybe they heard that I want to open my own game development studio. And as we speak, I am learning other game engines and stuff so I can actually move on to game development. And I'm actually studying video game and design at university. So this isn't just a hobby. This isn't just, oh, I'm modding to play games. No, this is like something that I hope will carry my life, <laughs> you know, <laughs> moving wow. forward. So I put a lot of time and effort and passion into it. <laughs> it definitely shows. It definitely shows, you know, going from going from our first video here when we were discussing the Total War New, New World uh, and even up till now and the, you know, minor conversations here and there when you come and play on the stream and everything like 
you can definitely tell and you're you're always willing to explain about the mod or if somebody doesn't understand something and i mean i've even checked out your discord where there's a lot of conversation going back and forth where you're kind of you know you come in with your ideas and then you, you it's not just all right this is the idea this is how it's going to be you come in and say this is what i'm thinking what do you guys think kind of thing yes. you listen to the the you know the, the members of your discord with their ideas or you know if there's something that they're like this is cool but maybe you could change this to that because i think that would be a little bit more cool kind of thing you're you're very open-eared and willing to listen instead of just being like well hi, this way or uh, my way or the highway kind of thing this is my mod this <laughs> is how i'm gonna make it this that's it blah 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 it's you're listening you're you're willing to change even though it's something that you might have thought of or that you've put a little bit of time into if somebody comes in and goes well this and you go oh actually that does sound better than what i thought of so yeah we'll do that kind of thing you know that's that's really impressive to me that's really impressive to me i, I that's you. one of the things that i admire more about you know obviously about the mod but i admire more about you because you're so open to opinion you're not just a, a brick wall of this is this so <laughs> yeah that's that's one of the problems i'm noticing in a lot of uh uh modern video games and even some modding communities they they have a very closed-minded vision of what they want their work to be and i, I understand that feeling that you want to because game development is is art i mean anything that you're letting your your mind run free and you bring it to reality that's art so a painter is not going to like it when his work is entirely based off of someone else. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. But people are, are, but they're like, they're forgetting that that form of art is also directed towards consumers, which yes. will immerse themselves in that art. So you got to find this middle ground between something you're, that meets your vision and meets theirs. Now, obviously, there's going to be some uh, people that who will never meet your vision and vice versa. Mm -hmm. But like like you said, people in my Discord giving me ideas and all that. If, if an idea just completely does not fit, I will say, no, this doesn't fit. I can't do it. Of yeah. course. And if something is very bad, I, I don't think this has actually happened yet. But if I give an idea and everyone's like, no, this is not going to work. I, I actually take that into consideration. I see how I can change it. And if I can't, then I'll just may maybe add it later on as a sub mod, like mm -hmm. an optional thing. But like, I am trying to stay as close to my community as possible. And even though my community is kind of small at the moment, I'm hoping that if this mod grows to be as big as DEI, I'm hoping to still be able to keep in contact with that a player base that big because that is something I think is very very important. Absolutely. If, yeah, if I'm not in touch with my player base, then I have no idea what they're after. If I don't exactly. know what they want, then I'm never going to know if it's doing well or not. And yeah. <laughs> you you absolutely. You hit it exactly on the head. That is that is one of the big things of, you know, like businessmen, you got to you I, I've been saying this a lot more lately. Businessmen, uh, you got to talk fast, you got to think faster. Well, Exactly. <laughs> in the, in the realm of work that you're doing, talking fast and thinking fast is good, but listening is yep. better. And that's why a lot of modern video games have been having a lot of trouble lately, a lot of controversies, because, and the theory goes that it's kind of like it's being run by businessmen and not game developers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's basically what's happening. Yeah, they they, they don't understand that. <laughs> well, yeah, a lot of a lot of a lot of uh, I don't want to say a lot, but there are a lot there are a decent amount of games, and I'm not just saying recent ones. I mean, like you know, uh, Call of Duty Two, Call of Duty Three. You know what I mean? Like there there it's it kind of feels like to me that there's like a a level of carbon copy. Which e with each one instead of there being, and it doesn't even need to be a drastic, like major drastic difference, but if they just tweaked a little bit here and there kind of thing, if they listened to their audience, if they all of a sudden saw that, hey, uh, game one did really well, game two did kind of good, game three is kind of tanking, what are we doing wrong? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like th I think that aspect is kind of being missed. 
um, by by certain game companies and certain uh, uh, communities, companies, however you want to say it. Um, but you you're you're kind of you're you're not letting that be an issue. You're 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 very you're very open to listening. I mean, you I've, like I said, we you know you 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 put your ideas out there in your Discord and you ask people their, their opinions. And exactly. you know, yeah. it's 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 very it's very it's very good to see, and to, it's very good to see that you know because it's it's not seen that often anymore. That the the creator of the game or the creator of whatever type of content doesn't really listen to the fan base, kind of thing. So. Um, but, uh, so I'm, I'm also looking here at the, uh, I don't know if I should be mentioning this or not. So if I, if I shouldn't be, then just tell me to stop. Uh, but I'm looking at the change log. So when this patch six comes out, will the change log be able to be viewed by anybody? Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be on the, 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 the mod page. There's a button called change log or update log. I don't remember what it was. Or change notes, something like that, uh, and the Steam Workshop page, and you'll see everything. Uh, this entire thing is going to be there. In fact, uh, you can go ahead and put this file somewhere or paste all this. I don't know. This is going to fit in your description box. <laughs> this is a lot of stuff. <laughs> but you can go ahead and put this there, and everything on here is going to be there. I, I might even add something to it. I don't know. But everything that's there right now is going to be... In there so anything that is so small that i'm not going to cover it in this talk here you can see it for yourself down there or in more detail okay so well i was i was actually going to say you've kind of given us a, a decent amount of information to 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 deal with um and with the when did you say i, I actually i have a couple of questions here before we wrap this up uh when is the projected release of patch six being now okay. it's December 15th, what are you figuring? Okay, so it is Tuesday, and I'm mm -hmm. hoping that no later than Saturday it'll be up. Um, for me, because, I mean, this isn't technically a job, even though, I like, like I said, I have so much passion into it like it's a job, mm -hmm. but because it's more of a a thing that I'm doing by myself and for myself, you know, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, I can, I can kind of prioritize other things in life sometimes. And, um, it sets the release date back a bit sometimes, but I've been doing that so much lately that I just want to, I just want to say, you know what? It's this Saturday. And no matter what, I am going to squeeze myself into working as hard as I can and get it ready by Saturday. Now, I don't do this thing where I release it even though it's not ready. I did that once before because I was very sick and I didn't know how long it was going to take. So I was mm. like, you know what? I was going to get it out and I fixed it like a week or a week later, something like that with all the missing content. But mm. I don't want to do that again because we see games do that right now. They release yes. it and it's not ready. And that's that's I don't think that's right. There's a difference okay. between releasing a beta build and stuff like that or releasing a stable update. And when I release a stable update, I want it to be as stable as possible. So <laughs> Definitely a good I can't quality. knowingly release something that's broken. Absolutely. If something is spotted after that, yeah, if something is spotted or detected after that, that's what the community and the bug, bug report section is for. But I can't know that something's broken and still release it. I can't Absolutely. <laughs> no, I get that. That makes sense. Uh, so here, my, uh, my final question here for you today is um what do we have to look forward to in the future is there going to be a patch seven at some point of course, down the of line? course of course i mean uh one thing that i'm hoping to get in patch seven is more uh an, an emphasis on politics a little more so in this in this coming update patch six you'll see that there are a lot of more government types in the game so you, you get your standard governments that are in the game uh all the effects each government gives you uh have been overhauled now and that's setting the tone for the next update which i'm hoping will have um more of an emphasis on politics in the game now it's never going to be paradox studio level like Parator rome and hearts of iron because that's that's that game is mostly politics there's no way you can take it up to that but i'm trying to make it so that there's an incentive or reason to actually spend time in the politics screen 
Um, okay. So. Well, I, I can honestly you, say yeah. that that's not really a screen that I tend to spend a whole lot of time in. So actually, that would be that would be a, a new addition for me personally to say <laughs> to that would make me spend another you know time in another aspect of the game that I really haven't spent a lot of time in. You know, I'm usually the one that just builds armies and goes and takes territories and you know, if I if a if a revolt happens or whatever or uh, you know, somebody in the family gets married, I, you know, promote them and stuff like that or whatever, but I haven't really dealt with the that other aspect that you're going to be, you know, adding in or beefing up if you will very much in pretty much all of the Total War games that I've ever played. Yeah, well, um, a good thing to, like a good alternative war, where I'm basically getting my inspiration for what I'm going to do with the politics, is from Attila and Thrones of Britannia, which do have more in-depth politics systems, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to implement some of their features in here. Mm. Um, and with the new government types, like I said, they're going to be available in Patch 6, uh, something like Syracuse, they can form a tyranny because they're known for their tyrant. You can actually, uh, I actually forgot his name, uh, but he was a well-known historical figure that actually ruled as a tyrant. So that sort of has a unique flavor to the faction of Syracuse where they can perform to a tyranny. And each, uh, and you can see some of the politics changes right now is that in the default game or even prior to patch six, there's really no reason to be anything other than an empire. The empire mm -hmm. gives you everything you need. Well, no, depending on your situation in the world, you might be able, you might have to switch between certain or different government types to suit your needs in the current situation and in the current position you are in on the map. And a lot of factions no longer start as kingdoms. I mean, in the original game, every faction starts as a kingdom pretty much. But now I've tried to set it to be more historically accurate. Mm -hmm. Factions like city-states, Greek city-states, now start as a politeia, which is a kind of like the Senate in, yes. a, in a little bit. Yeah, it's it, that, that's how it was. That it's citizens, people elected by the citizens, representing the government. And it, it, it will impact the early game, of course, uh, with their different um, uh, abilities that they're adding and all that uh, with like the, the government pros and cons, like the buffs and debuffs that mm -hmm. have been changed. Mm -hmm. uh, and like you also get things that I have edited uh, I don't know if this fits into the politics thing but it does add more immersion factions like like a faction like Sparta they're not mm -hmm. going to make client states anymore they make satrapies vassals they, they want to rule with an iron fist a little you know mm -hmm. uh, so in Pat 6 if you play as Sparta you're not going to have a client state that can rule on its own no if you form a client state it's going to be a satrapy which is like a puppet state because you're Sparta <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes. Things like that you'll be able to do in patch six right now. Um, and don't even get me started on the amount of visual things that have been added. New character models, new shields, new, uh, even on the campaign map, new unique generals, depending on the culture you're in. So many things. Like, I mean, I can talk about this patch six changelog forever. I mean, those past three to four months. Yeah, the wait was worth it. Don't worry. <laughs> well, that's why I'm saying that's why I'm making sure to that I had asked you if the change log was going to be available for everybody else to read because I want, you know, we went over the the, the main topics, kind of, you know, glimpsed into some of the the, the little changes here and there, or whatever. But I want I want to make sure that they all have the uh, the ability to read these things and and look at them and research them themselves. You know what I mean? Yes, they do. <laughs> it's, so, it's here. But. Um, yeah, man, that's, uh, like I said before, that is a lot of information. And guys, I'm looking at the changelog right now, and let me say this again. Genesis has done a lot of work in this mod since the last time there was an update. There's a lot of really interesting things here for you guys to take a look at. But don't forget, this coming Saturday, all hope this coming Saturday, yep. Genesis will be able to have all of this stuff buttoned up together and available for all of you to play. Again, this is the New World mod for Rome 2. Uh, Genesis, I want to thank you again for giving me the opportunity to, uh, you know. Oh, anytime. Thank you, man. And before we wrap this up, I'd actually like to say one last thing about Patch 6 that I can't believe I didn't mention earlier. Okay. And that is... Gnosis, all right, 
So mm-hmm. Gnosis, which are the Cretans, mm-hmm. um, has received a major overhaul. Same with Cyprus and Pergamon. Those three factions have slightly different, or not, I'm not even going to say slightly, I'm going to say completely different rosters from what you're used to. The closest Ooh. to the vanilla being Pergamon. It just has some more new Anatolian units that were added alongside the Anatolian kingdoms. But Cyprus uh, is a lot more like its historical uh, namesake, really, or what it like a, it was a satrapy of Egypt. It was kind of a Ptolemaic area thing. So it, it's a lot more like that. And with Gnosis, oh, they're, they're, they're completely different. You'll see for yourself. <laughs> they're, <laughs> well, they're, they're, they're different, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm honestly waiting to, uh, to see all of the changes. I'm pretty sure that a lot of the people who are going to be watching this are going to be very eager to, to see all of the changes that come with this. And then, of course... You know, as soon as it comes out and people start playing it, they're gonna they're gonna play it for a little while and then I'll automatically start chomping at the bit for uh, for, for for patch seven. So uh, <laughs> yeah, and but, then patch um, eight and nine and ten. Well, I mean, I'll keep going as long as I can. And even even in times where you might see me take a break for a few months, even I, I'm I'm definitely eventually gonna come back to everything because I enjoy doing this. And well, even taking a break, that doesn't mean that you're stopping working on it. You're just not exactly. really being vocal about it. Yeah, <laughs> you're kind of keeping <laughs> secrets <pretty> to all <laughs> of a sudden be like, oh yeah. So over the last like two months, you guys haven't heard from me. This is what I've done. Yep. <laughs> so I'd also like to mention that on my Steam page, there's uh, there's a link to a Trello page. And what Trello is, if you haven't heard of it, it's a uh, it's sort of uh, this table or schedule type of thing where I can put in everything that I'm working on with different tags and highlight wow. things and put check marks on it and all that. Yeah, you'll find the link in the uh, the Steam Workshop page, and since Joe, you asked me what I have, like for the future. Well, mm-hmm. I told you that Patch Seven is going to be focused on the political side of the game. Obviously, it's going to introduce like one new faction, probably uh, mm-hmm. alongside of it, uh, another miscellaneous little things in the campaigns and all that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but on that Trello page, you'll see a lot more in-depth things on what my vision is, like overhauled skill trees, overhauled tech trees, uh, or stuff like that you know but okay yeah well again guys you just heard it right there if you want get on over to the steam page take a look you guys are gonna be able to see what all he has uh planned and possibly coming out and coming up in the next uh next patch or you know what he's been working on now for this patch but uh again genesis i want to thank you very much for the opportunity for me to uh have this time to interview you and and uh get you to have the uh the time to Toss some, toss some information our way before the mod comes out, you know, the, the new factions and as far as the campaigns and everything. I want to thank you very much for coming in and giving me the time. I know you're a very busy guy, so trying to catch <laughs> you and trying to catch me at the same time, eh, it's a little bit of a toss-up here and there, but I'm yeah. glad we were able to get it together and get this yep. video together. Yep, I'm, I'm glad too. And, I mean, like I said before, I really thank you as well for all the interest that you've shown in the mod and and how like accepting you have been in bringing this mod into your community and showing it off basically helping it get into the spotlight because that can be pretty difficult when absolutely i agree with yeah. you. yeah <laughs> i definitely agree with you on that but uh, it's like i said back at the beginning uh, it has been a pleasure to to playing this mod and and doing the the you know the the, the multiplayer battles that we've done during streams and, you know, having you come in and play the game with us kind of thing, you know, you're the, you're the chief executive here of the mod, you know, so having you being able to get you in and play with us and even, even if you guys noticed or didn't notice, he kind of drops little hints of stuff during while we're playing battles too, so I don't know if that's him wanting to do that or just getting involved in it, it he just starts talking about it again. But um, no, this has definitely <laughs> been this has definitely been a really awesome experience. This mod has, uh, like I said before, you know, this this mod has kind of has kind of made made Rome two more broad for me, more uh, added more to the spectrum, to the total, you know, encompassment of of the game. And I mean, I'm I'm first and foremost, I'm excited to see what this patch is going to offer when it goes fully live and uh you know what you got going on after that is is just but a mystery but 
I'm I'm really really anticipating and really hoping and not even hoping because I know it's going to be good because everything else about this mod has been fantastic up to this point. I don't see you <laughs> I don't see you going under the bar. I just see you raising the bar more and more and more for this mod. So, but uh, that is uh, that's uh, that's going to be the end here for you guys. So no more little teasers or anything. If you guys want to know more information, you're going to have to wait for it to come out. And uh, again, Genesis, thank you very much for giving me this time. Thank you, man. I'm all right. Anytime. All right, guys. That is going to be the end here. Hope you guys all have a good rest of your day. Stay safe. And as always, until the next one.